How much salary do you need to live in Singapore? This must have been a very popular question, especially for some of you who are living overseas and you are deciding whether you want to come to Singapore to work and maybe you got a job offered and you are asking whether this salary is enough for me to come to Singapore and work. Now, according to Namio, the world's largest cost of living database, a family of four, would require 5.5k Singapore dollars without rent. And for a single, he or she would require 1.5k Singapore dollars without rent. I think these are considered fairly accurate estimates. I mean, you can't fight a cost of living database, right? But of course, I know what some of you are going to say. 1.5k, where got enough? Ultimately, it all depends on your lifestyle. But I'm speaking from a perspective of someone who is coming to Singapore to work. So if you want to have a larger skill discussion, talking about your own personal finance situations, then come and join us at over 11,000 members at the Honey Money SG Telegram group where you can ask the questions to the community of experts who will help guide you there. Now, the question is that if you're considering to work in Singapore, you are a foreigner. Compared to a local, you will have to incur so much more costs. One example is housing. For the local Singaporeans, they can either choose to stay with their parents or they can buy a subsidized HDB flat as a family unit or they could buy it as a single if they have reached 35. But for a foreigner, I think your first option would have been to rent. Which brings me to my first point, rental. How much are rentals in Singapore? There are a variety of property types that you can rent from, but I'll go for the most affordable option, which is HDB Common Rooms. HDB is Singapore Public Housing developed by the Housing Development Board of Singapore, and that is why the cost of living in HDB is much more affordable. For a common room within a HDB, within the size of 10 square meters to 15 square meters, it can fetch around a price of 900 to 1,200 Singapore dollars. And if you were to attach a toilet to it, we call that the master bedroom, that will cost around an additional 200 Singapore dollars. So depending on your level of comfort, whether you want to have a master bedroom with an attached toilet, that will come with a higher cost. And if you want to share the common room with a roommate, then that will be like a 50% cost. But not all landlords allow you to share a common bedroom. Some prefer to have just a single tenant because they do not want to deal with so many people living within the space. So for rental, let's take an average price of $1,200 per month located in a city fringe location like Kalang and it's a common room. Pretty convenient location near an MRT as well. Secondly is utilities but specific to Singapore context, most of the utilities are already included within the rental cost. However, there are some landlords which exclude the utility cost. So like you need to pay additional for internet or for air conditioning, maybe like a max of $100. Of course, all these things you have to negotiate in the tenancy agreement, make sure that both sides are agreeable to what terms are included. And at this point of time, some of you may already have this idea, just the rental is already like half of my salary. How am I going to survive in Singapore? And I totally understand that, which is why I think that you cannot think of working as an employee forever. I think at some point of time, you need to learn how to invest. And how to start investing, I think you should look at it from my sponsor of today. The Singapore GST just hiked 1% in 2024 and times are tougher now. But Mumu SG is doing 1% more with idle cash because you can get 6.8% per annum with the new Mumu Cash Plus promotion for 31 days. At a max subscription of $60,000, you will be getting a total return of $340. What's more, Mumu SG now has the Fullerton SGD liquidity fund which provides higher flexibility with same day subscription and redemption for more opportunities. That's not all, you can get up to four stock bundles of the top five traded US stocks worth $70 each and one Apple stock worth $260. And if you sign up with my exclusive link, you can get one additional $20 cash coupon. Total rewards value of $900 Singapore dollars. Of course, holding period and buy trade applies. Please know that Mumu Cash Plus is an investment product and it's not comparable and it's different from savings deposits. Principal is not guaranteed and up to 31 days, 6.8% per annum is guaranteed only during the promotional period. Investment in capital market products involves risk and the risk of losing principal. For more details, please refer to the promotional page in the description below. So don't miss this deal and use my referral link down below or scan the QR code right here to get your Momo XG Universal account today. Let's move on to the next cost factor, which is transportation. Because transportation is a necessity, you have to travel to your workplace. And the good news is, you don't have to buy a car in Singapore. Public transportation is really affordable right here. The networks are considered okay. But the bad news is, if you really want to own a private vehicle, it's going to cost you so much money that you won't even think about it. I did make a previous video on how much salary you need to afford a car. 
And the gist is, unless you're willing to fork out $2,500 every month to just maintain a car, I don't think it makes any financial sense to own one, especially if your family is not rooted here. Or in another case, driving a car helps bring you additional income. Then I think it's justified to buy a car. So I would say a daily commute between your office and your home is around $3 to and fro, depending on the distance as well. So there are some ways to help you reduce the cost of transportation. Firstly, you should look at using Simply Go with credit cards where they can give you some cashback or rebates, like some of the credit cards I shared in my Simply Go public transportation video right here. Or maybe you can tap in earlier before 75 a.m. on all the MRT stations so that you can get a 50 cents discount. So let's assume for your daily commute, the cost is $3 per day and multiply by 22 workdays that will be $66 and add in some of your public transportation during weekends that will be around $20 per month and I'll add some occasional taxi or grab private hire vehicle rides so that's an additional $64 which totals your cost of transportation to around $150 per month fairly reasonable. Next, we have to talk about food because some of you would think that Singapore must be one of the most expensive places to buy food. But I'm going to bring in this piece of good news that eating out in Singapore is actually really cheap. And I'm going to assume that you're not going to do any cooking because if you're living in a rental unit, most likely the landlord will not allow you to do any form of cooking. So most of the hawker center meals right now in 2023 will cost around $4 to $5 per set, excluding the drink. Therefore, if I just want to calculate by two meals per day, during your workday outside, then there will be $10 per day budget. So for 22 workdays, there will be $220 per month. I will exclude the cost of breakfast because I personally do not take breakfast and practice intermittent fasting, but you can add it to your own cost if that is relevant for you. Now, don't forget that other than working days, you have eight weekend days. And let's say each weekend day, you spend around $30 just to eat better during the weekends. So that will be eight times 30, which is $240. So you add the working days, $220 and non-working days, $240, which is a total of $460 per month. I'm going to add a $40 buffer just to round the numbers up to $500 spent on meals per month. Now next up is groceries and necessities. And for groceries, your cost is going to be very minimal because like I said, you don't have to cook. And if you don't cook, you don't have to buy ingredients. You just have to buy whatever necessities that you're using, like your body soap, like some clothes. And since you're living alone, you also don't have to buy much necessities. So maybe like $75 every two weeks, there will be $150 in grocery shopping every month. Therefore, if you add up all the expenses for a single person, $1,200 for rent, $100 for utilities, $150 for transportation, $500 for food, and $150 for groceries and necessities, that will come up to $2,100 per single pax, and that is including rent. Note that all this calculation is based on the very bare bones living necessity level, which means you exclude any form of expensive hobbies. For example, drinking, going to nightclubs, smoking, beauty services, and even travel. All these are excluded because you have to save a separate budget for that. And this is all assuming that you have no kids. You come to Singapore as a single because if you add kids into the equation, it's going to just inflate the cost to so much higher. So in personal finance, we always talk about a ratio, 50% needs, 30% wants and 20% savings. So if you were to just put 50% needs being the $2,100, your 100% will be $4,200 of salary. Then your 30% of wants will be $1,260, which can be saved as a budget for your travel or you want to give your parents some allowance or you're saving up for a wedding or your new home next time. Then the remaining 20%, you can put it to either your cash savings or your investments like my sponsor. And note that the $4,200 must be after tax and after any form of deductions like CPF deductions or you have to pay taxes accrued and also insurance as well if that's applicable to you. So if $4,200 if the net salary, I just have to add back the CPF 20% portion to make it the gross salary which is $5,250. Then if I were to add that buffer just for all those things that I did not mention, I think a comfortable salary for a single to come to Singapore to work will be 5.5k to 6k per month. Note that I said comfortable level. I did not say it's a luxurious level or a very cheap level because depending on your level of lifestyle, all these costs will change according to circumstances and you have to calculate for yourself because I do not know your personal situation and it's definitely not financial advice. And this is all from a micro level. And if you really want to know from a macro level, how much salary is enough in Singapore, I did do a very popular video right here where you can see what are the separate milestones of the Singapore salary system.